one of the most epic moments of the Star Wars saga is to watch the executor, the super star destroyer that served as Vader's flagship during the original trilogy, go down as an A-wing pilot kamikaze to the bridge. Its slamming into the incomplete second Death Star is a signal that the tide had definitely turned in the favor of the rebels. Yet, how did a single pilot with a damaged starfighter take down such a massive starship? Surely, there was more to it, right? Actually, there is. There is more to it than simply the bridge being taken out. During the Battle of Endor, we first see the Executor quite a ways away from the Rebel fleet. Admiral Piet had orders to hold position, block the Rebels' escape, and let the Emperor use this Death Star to annihilate the Rebel fleet. The Death Star is seen far away from the Executor. At first, that's what happened. However, Lando Calrissian convinced Admiral Akbar to throw the Rebel fleet at the Imperial Star Shores hoping to use the fear of friendly fire to keep the Death Star from firing his super laser again, taking out yet another one of the Rebels' ships. Next time we see the battle, from the bridge of the Executor, the Death Star is still visible. However, we see the surface of it filling the lower portion of the viewport. So why was the Executor above the Death Star in the first place? Well, my assumption is that when the shield generator was destroyed, Piet went on the offensive with Death Squadron and attempted to protect the Death Star by forming a defensive perimeter around it. Now the A-Wing was piloted by none other than Green Leader Arvik Krined, who took the opportunity bought by the destruction of the bridge deflector shields to slam his damaged A-Wing into the bridge, taking out the bridge crew and Admiral Piet. However, in Legends, Super Star Destroyers had auxiliary bridges to take over in the event of damage to the main bridge. In canon, it was established that ship systems could be controlled from engineering. So then, if there was other locations that could have taken over on the ship, why did the Executor go down and crash? You see, the second Death Star was so massive it generated its own gravity. Once they lost any control, they were at the mercy of the gravity. One more thing doomed them. Had they been able to, the engines could have been reversed and pulled them away, similar to what happened to the invisible hand was struck and began to plunge towards Coruscant in Revenge of the Sith. Problem was, one of the engines was damaged on the executor. The damaged engine would have prevented them from reversing for the gravity pulling them in. This is the same thing that happened during the Battle of Jakku with the Ravager, the last of the Empire's Super Star Destroyers. This final blow was what destroyed the executor and turn the Battle of Endor and the Galactic Civil War in favor of the Rebel Lines. So in the end, what really killed the Executor? Being so staying close to the second Death Star that its gravity could grab it as soon as anything went wrong. Well, that's it for today, guys. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, follow us on Twitter, and if you haven't subscribed, do so. Have a wonderful day, and may the Force be with you.